time when you hear about any remote job, it sounds great. But today we're going to be discussing the pros and the cons of remote medical billing. So if you're interested in finding out about that, then please keep watching. Hi guys, Tamika here. Welcome or welcome back. So like I stated, we'll be discussing the pros and cons of remote medical billing. But before I actually get into the pros and the cons, I just wanted to kind of go over the different types of remote medical billing jobs. Because you can actually have a remote medical billing job where maybe you work for a hospital or an office setting and it's just, it would be just as if you worked in the office, but the difference is that you're working at home. So you're still a W-2 employee. You still maybe might get benefits. Um, you know, you still get time off and bonuses and all of those things. So you're still an employee, but the difference is that you actually just work at home instead of working in the office. And then you have the other type of remote medical biller who gets a 1099 at the end of the year instead of a W-2 form. They um, have to probably purchase their own equipment, which I'll go into all of that. But they're basically different because they're not an employee of the employer. They do work for a provider or a hospital or something like that, but their titles are different, a 1099 compared to a W-2. So that's basically the difference between remote medical billing. So if someone can say that they are a remote medical biller, but you need to find out what type of remote medical biller they are. In today's video, I'll be discussing the pros and cons of a remote medical biller who gets a 1099, who's considered a contract worker, who maybe might have their own billing business. That's the pros and cons that I will be discussing today. So we're going to start off with the cons and then we're going to go to the pros. I have three of each and I probably could have gotten a little bit more, but if you want to see more, then let me know. But we're going to start off first with three. So the cons, we're going to start off with the first con. And the first con, for me at least, is that you it can get very lonely. So I think that's a con for myself as anyway, because I'm not gonna say I'm a big uh, extrovert, like I need to be around people all the time. Um, I can't be my, by myself or anything like that. But sometimes you can get so engrossed in doing your work and if you're, like you say, you're doing it remotely, you're not really communicating with other people, you're just in your house or in your office or wherever you are, but for the most part, you might be by yourself. And for me, that's what it is because I'm currently, I do my remote billing by myself. I don't have any staff. I don't have any other extra people that I'm working with. So it can sometimes get a little bit lonely because you want to talk, you know, when you're in an office setting, or even if you might have a billing business, you might have employees, you have people to talk to, people to, you know, if stuff, something is going wrong or whatever the situation is, you have someone to talk to. But like I said, for me, it's a con because sometimes you get lonely and you need people to talk to every now and then. So that's the first con for me. The second con is, the, and I mean, I, the second con for me, I can say, is that you have to purchase your own equipment, your own books, your, um, to when you update your certifications, you have to buy that yourself. Like you have to basically do everything. So like I said, I was watching some other videos and they were like, well, you know, my employer supplies my um, laptop, they supply my monitors, my coding books, they pay for my certification um, updates to keep them updated. They might even pay for some CEUs if you need to do that. So there are things that your employer might pay for if you're a W-2 medical, remote medical biller. But in my instance, I have to pay for everything. I pay for, like I said, my equipment, um, my my equipment, my books. Uh, every year, I have to renew my membership for AAPC, which AAPC is the organization that I have been certified 
through and I don't want to lose my certifications. I have three of them and I work too hard to lose them. So I don't want to lose them. So every year I have to um, renew my membership. And then every two years I have to get a certain amount of CEUs to keep my certifications. So I pay for all of that. I pay for supplies if I have to mail out anything. Um, if I have to mail out, let's say statements, I pay for stamps, I pay for um, ink, paper, um, envelopes. You know, I pay for pretty much everything. So yes, I do get paid to bill, but I do have to factor in all of those other things. And this would be whether I um, if whether I have a business, which I do have, or if I'm just billing for a provider on the side as a 1099 contractor, most likely you may still have to pay for all of these things. So that's my second con. My third con would be communicating with the office. And when I say that, I mean, um, when you're in the office and you have different people, um, that you work with that helps you or is in connection with you. They might not necessarily help you, but you know, if you're the person who does the billing and there's someone who does coding and the doctor, you know, he does his thing or she does her thing and you need to ask them a question, you can probably just get up, go to their office, ask them the question, get your question answered or, you know, whatever you need, you can probably get it pretty quickly because you guys see each other every day and you can get your answer pretty quickly. But in my instance, I find that communicating with people, e either calling them on the phone, but most likely I usually email them. It takes a longer time to get a response. I'm not sure if, you know, maybe many people might not like emails. Um, some people have so much emails that they don't <laughs> want to answer them. But I find it hard to get and answer pretty quickly. So if I'm in the group, I'm in the mix, I have a question about a, a code or, you know, a modifier or something that's missing. And I email the provider one time or I email the office because I'm missing, um, addresses or insurance information. And I email these people. It takes a while to get a response back. Now that holds me up from doing what I have to do because now I have to put that on my list of things to follow up on. And the more you have to follow up on, the more you can miss something and you really don't want to have to miss anything because you want to be able to build everything that you have to build out one time. And like I said, sometimes you get in a groove, you just want to get everything out, make sure that everything is done and you have to ask a question that takes a longer time. So for me, that might be a con because um, the communication tends to be much, much slower than if I was in an actual office and could just get up and get my answer, um, the answer to my question. So those are my three cons. It gets kind of lonely. You do have to pay for everything and the communication can, is really, can be really slow and you know, you just can't get things done in the timely fashion that you'd want to. Now here are my pros, which I really think outweighs the cons. And that's why I continue to do the remote be medical billing that I do. So my first pro is the flexibility. And when I say flexibility, I mean the flexibility in time. So like I stated, I was watching different videos and they, you know, they stated that, okay, well, I have to clock in by this time. You know, they might have the flexibility of clocking in between 5 a.m. and 12 um, p.m. in the afternoon or, you know, or no, or maybe their employer needs them to clock in at eight o'clock just the same day they, way they would if they were in an office. In my instance, I don't clock in. So I do my billing whenever I want to do it. If I want to get up two o'clock in the morning and do billing, I can do that. Um, I don't have anybody behind my back telling me it should have been done this time, that time, or the next. Now in my instance, I do have um, a, with my contract, my providers, I have a contract stating, well, billing will be done at a certain time. You know, it will be done within three business days from when you give me within 10, within five, whatever your thing is. So they know that it will be done within that time, but there's no time specific time to say like 
it'll be every morning I have to get up and do it at 8 o'clock. Every afternoon I have to get up and do it at, you know, 6 p.m. when I get home. I have to clock in at this time, clock out at that time. It's none of that, which is very good for me. Because let's say I got up this morning, I wanted to do the billing at 8 o'clock because I find that I'm a morning person. So I usually try to get up 5, 6, 7 in the morning to start my billing so that I can get it done. My mind is the best, it's the sharpest, I'm more focused, and that's when I tend to do the billing. So, but this morning, you know, because life happens, I might get up at 5 and then, you know, something happens in my house and I have to deal with that. I don't necessarily have to worry about, oh my God, I didn't do the billing for this time. And I try my best to not wait for the last day. So if I tell a provider that I'm going to do billing within three business days, I usually still do it within the first business day. But that gives me an opportunity that if something happens that first business day, then I have the second and I have the third to still work on it. So there's a big flexibility with that. And I always wanted that when I decided that I wanted to do billing remotely. I did not want to still be um, confined to the time restraints of an office. So my thing was not, was not just being remote and not having to go physically to the office, but it was to be able to have the flexibility of time in general where I can do it when and where I please. Like I know, um, what I have to do. I don't need anybody to tell me. I know what, what time I have to do it in and that's what I really wanted to do. So the first pro is the flexibility in time. My second pro is that you can maximize your productivity. And what I mean by that is that if you're working for one provider and you have, you work from eight to five and you know, you have a certain amount of Whole, um, billing that you have to do and you know you do that when the, within a certain amount of time there are some times or lots of times when you have finished what you had to do way before the time that you had to do it now you have to try and figure out what am I gonna do because you are on the clock you are on the time of that employer so you have to figure out what you're gonna do from eight to five you know, even if there's barely anything to do. In my situation, I have a few providers, so I can say, okay, I'm gonna from, you know, I'm gonna do these providers, I'm gonna do all three of them at one time. And if I finish that in four hours, then I don't have to find anything else to do if I don't have anything else to do. I can maybe go and run personal errands, I can watch TV, I can, take care of my puppy. I, you know, I can do whatever I want to do. I don't have to try and find something to do within that time. And for me, that means you can maximize your time because when you work a W2 job, nine to five or whatever, or whatever the hours may be, you, you ha you're only dealing with that particular employer. So you should not be doing anything for any other employer. If you have, you know, that, or you should not be doing any personal um things on your work time and for me it felt like you know most of my week was taken up being a w-2 employee and i didn't have the opportunity or the time to do things that i wanted to do because i knew what i had to do i do my work they get done and then it's like you're just there you know you have to find stuff make up stuff do whatever so you can really maximize your time if you are a remote employer who doesn't necessarily have a W-2. The third pro is location. So when I mean location, I mean, um, you could, let's say, let's use your home. If you're at home and for me, I have an office of one of my bedrooms, I have converted into an office. So most of the time I do my billing in my office because even though you're at home, you don't want to be doing it in your bed, you know, laying down, you, that will, I think, decrease your productivity, will make you feel lazy. I still want to feel like I am at work doing my work. So I have a business office, but some days I come and I might want to do it in the living room. Um, 
that's made mostly for me the two places that I would do it. And since there's no one else but my puppy who's gonna be here, I don't have to worry about the whole if anyone's gonna see um, patient's information and HIPAA and all that stuff. It's just me, so I'm fine with that. If someone does come over, if I have people who come over, my family, whoever. I'm not doing it and if I decide that I do need to do it, I go into my office, I lock my door and I'm good to go. Also, if I decide to go on vacation, if, you know, if I pick up and say I want to go on vacation for two months, as long as I have the supplies that I need, as long as I have my laptop, as long as I have a secure internet um, access, as long as I have the information that I need to bill, I can do this from where I live. I can do this on vacation in Mexico. I can do it wherever I want to do it. I have not done that as yet, but I hope to aspire to be able to do that because that's the point of me being remote. You know, you just make sure that you can do billing from anywhere. You just make sure that you always are. Um, you have the security measures in place and that you have the tools that you need to do the billing and you're good to go. So I hope these tips were helpful or the, the pros and the cons. They kind of gave you an idea of the differences. Um, number one, between the types of remote medical billing jobs and number two, the pros and the cons because you nothing will ever be just great. You know, there's always going to be something you might not like. But you kind of have to choose what is best for you and what you prefer from what you don't prefer. I make videos on Saturdays and I hope that you come back to watch more. So please subscribe. Um, I wanted to know from you, have you ever wanted to do remote medical billing? Or are you more of a person who don't mind being in the office that you would want to be able to mingle with people, be able to talk to people you didn't necessarily, you like um, commuting back and forth. Are you that person or are you someone who has been looking into doing remote medical billing? So if you like this video, please like the video, subscribe and comment below. Let me know what more videos you'd like to see and I hope to see you in the next one.